Hey guys, um, we're going to do some um, yoga postures to help with lower back pain. Um, the postures that I'm going to use, um, I have uh, worked with before, people have used them before, and um, they're pretty safe postures. So um, yoga is absolutely amazing for your back and um, I do recommend people to do yoga but sometimes when you go if you go to like a general class they'll get you in positions that if you have suffered with your back um, it can make it worse so what I'm going to do today is going to just be really gentle and postures that I know can help with um, quite can be quite uh, severe like back issues but obviously I want you to listen to your body and there might be ones that don't suit you you might need to miss some of these out that I do or you might have to just um, take it really easy in some of them so um, obviously if you feel any like severe sort of sharp pains or anything uh, nerve pains tingles maybe just to come out of it um, and also, um, if you don't generally feel anything at the time, see how you feel for the next few following days. So, um, yeah, let's get started. So, the first one we're going to do is um, just a cat position. Um, so, you need to be coming onto your hands and knees. If, um, if you struggle a bit with your knees, you might want to put something underneath, uh, like a blanket or something, just to make it a little bit more comfy on your knees so am I gonna have to kick my cat out <laughs> so you um so for cat position you're just coming down um into the middle of your, your mat you want to have your hands directly below your shoulders and your knees directly below your hips so um generally uh, your middle fingers want to be pointing straight forwards and I normally spread my fingers out so um, your toes, you can either point the toes straight back, keep them active, or you can turn your, uh, curl your toes under, so whatever feels best for you. Try to keep the feet um, hip width as well, so they're in line with the knees and the toes. So um, we're going to start off just with the spine in like a neutral position. So sometimes... Um, well, yeah, sometimes back pain can be caused by like muscle imbalances. Um, so we're going to try and target some of those today with the postures that we do. Um, but uh, also like some people might sort of have generally quite a big dip in the lower back. Or it could be the opposite. Some people could be more like that naturally. So what we're going to try and do is try and have like um, bring the spine to neutral. So it's like fairly central and we're not flattening off the back so we're not we we want to we do generally want to have like a little dip in the lower spine in the lumbar spine so um but yeah just make sure that you're not like uh kind of need to work your abdominals a little bit so you're not letting them go slack so spine to neutral and then try and keep your neck as well in line with your spine so again it's like yeah, neutral's not straight, it's a curve, so you've got a slight curve in the cervical spine, so it dips in, then the thoracic will dip back out, so here, and then the lumbar will dip back in, and then the, um, the sacrum, the coccyx, comes up a little bit. <laughs> so, um, so just maintaining that. Also, a really important, um, as well as being aware of your muscles and your posture, really important thing I think is um, breathing when it comes to um, pain in the body in general but especially um, like pain around this area so uh, the lower back or even the upper back or the rib cage the abdomen quite often will hold a lot of tension and we won't breathe properly so breathing properly will um, from my experience it does help with back pain so um, you want to be just breathing through your nose so in and out through your nose if that feels comfy and we're trying to create some movement in the rib cage as we inhale and exhale
also we can bring some movement into the belly as well. So sending movement into the belly and into the, um, the lower back. So as we inhale, we're just creating space through the body. And as we exhale, just feeling the body contracts a little bit. So for cat, we're going to bring some movement. So we're going to, um, on an inhale, we're just going to stay where we are. So we're inhaling, had to think about that. So we're inhaling. And then we're going to exhale. We're going to tuck the tailbone under. And we're going to draw the head down. So we're going to inhale back to neutral. So we're just coming straight back to neutral. So in the full cat, we go a little bit further. But for the minute, we're just going to stick with this. So coming back to neutral on the inhale, the gaze is slightly um, is down, but slightly at an angle forwards. So it's not straight down. So that's the inhale. So obviously we're doing this position. <laughs> so if you do have any, obviously, slip discs or um, bulging discs, you just um, want to be aware of this because it can open up the back, it could make it worse. Um, but it might help also to release tension. So listen to your body as to how far you feel you want to go on the exhale of tucking the tailbone down. So inhale, just coming back to neutral. Exhale. We tuck the tailbone down and we drop the head down and we like looking back towards the hips. So really connect with your breathing. As we exhale, we draw the, the tummy muscles up. So we like work the tummy muscles, drawing the spine up. So it is great if you suffer a lot of tension in the lower back, it's great for releasing tension in the lower back. Also the upper back, this one as well. Inhale, spine comes back to neutral. So if you want to go a bit further, we can go a bit further this time. So um, we're going to exhale the same, draw the arch of the spine and draw the tailbone under. Inhale, we're going to just slightly dip the lumbar spine. So um, and we, we also look up. So the reason I didn't do that to start off is because if people's um, tummy muscles are, are not very toned or they tend to have a big curve in the lumbar spine, it can aggravate, can cause a bit of pain, also bringing the head up can as well. So it's up to you. If you want to just go to neutral, that's fine. Or if you want to take it a bit further on the inhale, you can have a go at that. So we are taking it further and we're dipping the, the lumbar spine slightly, but we're not like really slackening off the tummy muscles. So you still want to have control over it as you do it. So let's do it again. So um, we'll just start off in neutral and inhale. We're going to exhale, do what we did before, tuck the tailbone under, head down. Inhale, so either coming back to neutral or if you want to go a little bit further, Little dip in the lumbar and gazing forwards. And then exhale, tuck the head down, tailbone under. So really just work with your body. So a really nice one for bringing some movement to the spine. And also just releasing tension as well. So putting your movement to your breath, go at your own pace. might find you have a natural pause after the inhale and also after the exhale. Um, just do this as long as you feel comfy. When you feel ready, just come back to neutral. Connect with your breathing. So we're going to come back into um, child's pose, extended child's pose. So for this one, we sit back on the heels. Um, and also, if it feels comfy, you bring the feet together. So the knees are going to go like a pop, quite a bit apart, if that feels okay. And the feet come together, sit back on the heels. So this could be quite um, strong if you're a little bit tight in the knees or in the hips. Um, it can also be a bit strong under the, the feet. 
I forgot to bring my blanket. I'll show you with this actually. <laughs> I forgot to bring my blanket. I'm not very prepared. So yeah, you can put like a blanket, a folded blanket underneath the um the feet if that feels comfy as well. And um I'll show you with cushions. Cushions can help if you are tight in the hips or the knees, um, or also the back as well. This can help. So you can put <laughs> uber comfy cushions there um, and then coming down. So if you're doing this, you might want to raise the head a bit um, by putting fists underneath the forehead. Or <laughs> blocks. If you have blocks, you could try with blocks under the forehead, you can bring the hands forwards, so kind of experiment really and get into a comfy position, what um, what feels good to you, um, again because we're coming forwards and we're opening up the back, so again slip discs, di uh, you know, dis pro prolapse disc problems, Go easy with this one and make sure um, that yeah it feels okay because it, it is opening up the back. Um, general tension in the lower back, this one's a really good one. So I'll show you the full thing. <laughs> so the, <laughs> the full thing, um, yeah, we're sitting back on the heels. So only do this if it feels okay. You're coming all the way down. The hands can stretch forwards, that gives you quite a nice stretch through the spine. And also you can co come into that really nice deep breathing. So we don't, we're not, um, not really toning the body in this one. So like the cat, we were thinking about um, working the muscles. This one we're like just resting down into it, letting gravity do the work and just trying to let go. So we're um, nice deep breathing. As you inhale, you can send your breath really deep into your belly and also send it into your lower back. So um, we do call it back breathing in yoga. Where we try and send the breath into the lower back and it helps to massage the kidneys and it also helps to release tension in the lower back. So nice full deep breathing if that feels okay to you. Again, listen to your body, how long you feel you want to hold. We'll probably do this one a few more times anyway, because we're going to do um, a cobra exercise. So this is like a, a counter pose to the cobra. So, um, yeah, when you feel ready to come out, you just sort of like walk your hands out. My cat, she's probably going to start jumping all over me now because I'm going to lay down. <laughs> so the next exercise is... Um, is laying down so you're going to come down onto your tummy so again um yeah this one is we're going to do one called cobra and um this one is quite a good one if you've had prolapsed or bulging discs um and it's very similar to an exercise that physios give um to help to tone the lower back and um, encourage the discs to uh, sort of stay in the right place. So, um, but again, listen to your body. If if you're suffering a different issue with the lower back, um, this can be strong on the lower back. So we'll just sort of do it in stages. So um, obviously you're coming down onto your tummy. So again, I know um, I've worked with people and just literally laying on the tummy can um, can hurt and sometimes they have to have something underneath. So if that's the case, then um, this probably isn't the exercise for you because ideally you want to be just straight down onto your mat. So um, I'm going to move my cat because <laughs> you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. Sorry, Lucrish, I'm kicking you out. So, um, so lay down on my front, your legs are either going to come together or they can be slightly apart, so no more than hip width, you don't want them really wide. 
So um, as close together as you feel comfy. And you're going to point through the toes. The hands are going to um, come slightly up on your mat. So if you have your hands um, around sort of your, probably around your hairline, and your forehead's going to come down onto your mat. So we want to, um, yeah, we want to be quite active in this one. So we're going to um, keep pointing through the toes, and we're also going to work the the muscles of the pelvic floor. So in yoga, we call it the mula bandha. Or um, if you've come across Pilates, it's like probably a similar thing to uh, drawing up the pelvic floor. We also want to work the transverse abdominis muscles in the lower abdomen to um, to help us lift us up and also protect the lower back. Um, we work the muscles down through the legs, the legs stay active. And also when you go up into this one, you can work the glutes as well. So um, again, it's kind of listening to your body. So um, I know in the physio exercise, um, well, one of the ones that I know, it's you don't work the glutes. Um, and some yoga exercises will say not to work the glutes as well. But if you feel happier working the glutes, because they're big, strong muscles that will help to support the, the lower back as well. So you can do the work with that as well. So, um, yeah, hands are up, forehead down. And you're going to go up on an in-breath. So as you inhale, you're going to push, sorry, you're going to um, like brush your nose across the ground. And then your chin. And then you're going to push down on your hand. So as you do this, I want you to do that uh, pointing away through the toes, draw up the pelvic floor, um, squeeze the glutes if you need to, and work the lower abdominals, connect with your breathing. So you just go up so far, you don't have to go up too far at all, so some people will be further down here, some people prefer just to keep the elbows down, so if you want to do that, you could do that. Um, if possible, bring the elbows up. So keeping the elbows down is a different posture called sphinx pose. By bringing the elbows up, it will help just to work into the lower back a little bit better. So the gaze is just straight ahead, lengthen through the back of the neck, connect with your breathing. It's really strong, it's a great one this one, really strong, <laughs> so you don't have to hold too long. When you're ready to come down, nice and controlled on an exhale, coming down. Bring the forehead down, bring the arms down by your sides, turn your palms up, just connect with your breathing. So we're going to have another go, so um, hands up sort of by the hairline. Sorry, I didn't say about the elbows either. So your elbows want to be like tucked into your sides. Uh, remember, keep your body active. So point away through the toes. Keep the legs active. Um, drawing up the pelvic floor. Uh, working the lower transverse abdominis. And when you're ready, on an inhale, brush the nose and the chin. Cross the floor, cross the mat. Push down on your hands, coming up. So if possible, you're just raising the elbows, gazing straight ahead. It stretches the abdomen, so really nice stretch for the front of the body. Squeeze the glutes. If you want to really squeeze the glutes, you can, or just uh, keep working the pelvic floor to support the lower back. Hold as long as you feel comfy. Exhale, coming down, nice and controlled. We're going to stretch out. We're going to come back into the child's pose. So if you need to um, grab your cushions, you can. So we're coming back. So I think good after we've done a couple, it's quite strong on the lower back. So it's good to just counter pose it and stretch it out. So yeah, use your cushions if you need to. Coming back down. 
Do some really nice deep breathing. Allowing that lower back to open out. Nice stretch for the hips as well. If, the, if you're bringing the feet together and the knees are out wide, it's a nice hip opener. So rest here as long as you feel you need to. We're going to do it a couple more. We're going to do the cobra a couple more times. So when you feel ready, you're going to come back down onto your tummy. So um, so this time I'm going to show it you just a little bit more advanced. If um, yeah, if you find that like strong enough, just stick with that. The hands further forward. Uh, makes it easier basically so um, if you find that strong enough that's fine just keep the hands further forward and then obviously the um, the easier you find it or the, the more you practice it you can kind of bring the hands further back I'm going to show you with the hands um, further back with the hands underneath the shoulders so you can have a go at this if you want um, that's cool. So, um, yeah, hands are coming under the shoulders again. Elbows tucked into the sides. Legs together or just slightly apart. Point through the toes. Forehead down. And we're just doing the same thing again. So inhale, brush the nose, chin, brush your mat. Brush down through your hands. Working muscles of the lower back. Relax your breathing. Gazing straight ahead. So, uh, do you want the pelvic floor? Also, the shoulders. Make sure the shoulders don't come up. So, there's a tendency to do that and shoulders come up. Keep the shoulders down so the elbows can stay bent. So, elbows aren't going out. Elbows are into the sides. Chest is open. And when you feel ready, exhale, coming down. Give your arms a little rest by your side. You can turn your head to one side if you want to have a little rest out. So it's a great one, Cobra. Um, I find it really strong. And it's one that you kind of, a lot of yoga practices um, will do sun salutations where we do an upward dog, which is similar to Cobra, but it's... Um, I don't know. It's a, it's different, so you can does use different muscles, and um, it doesn't necessarily prepare you for doing cobra. So we'll have another go at cobra. So um, yeah, hands under your shoulders, or if you want to take them higher to make it easier, that's fine. Elbows are drawn into the sides. Forehead down, point through the toes, and. On an in-breath, push the nose, chin across your mat, push through your hands, then you're coming up. So again, if you, um, obviously if it feels strong, just come up slightly here, even, keep the elbows bent, um, that's fine. The higher you go, the stronger it's going to be on the lower back. So just listen to your body, keep the shoulders down, chest open, gaze straight ahead. through the toes, legs active, and when you feel ready, exhale, coming down. So I can feel it on my triceps. <laughs> and then we'll stretch out, so we're going to um, come back into the child's pose. This time we're going to uh, do a slightly different version, if it feels okay. Um, so the legs are going to come together for this one. If you prefer, you can keep them apart. So um, if it feels okay, they're coming together. And um, again, you can use your cushions if you want to put your cushions under, blankets under. And the arms are going to come by the side. So you can use your blocks if you want to. Lower. Or don't use anything. If that feels comfy, coming all the way down, arms down by your side. So palms are facing up. So this is a restorative position, child's pose. 
just going to rest out here. So we're doing um, some nice deep breathing. Breathe into the lower back. Allow your body to let go of tension. So you're just really resting down onto the ground, trying to release all your joints. Slow your breathing down. So yeah, like I say, some people find this really strong. So it's a restorative position, but um, but it is quite strong and it can be um, quite make you a bit heady, bringing the head down. So make sure you feel comfy doing that. If you need to raise the head, obviously use blocks or use fists. Um, and also it can be strong on, on all the joints or on the back, so use your supports if you need to. So if you can do that really deep breathing into the lower back, you can even try putting your hands like around the kidney area, lower back area. See if you can get some movement there as you inhale. See if you can feel the muscles pressing against the hands. This is great for releasing tension. And sometimes um, issues in the lower back are just um, are caused by just tension, basically, and an incorrect breathing. And when you feel ready, you're going to come up. We're going to come back onto the hands and knees and we're going to do one called um, half dog. So this is a nice stretch um, and it's kind of like a good prep up for the full downward dog. The full downward dog is very strong on the body um, and it's very strong if you've got tight hamstrings and it can compromise the back. So it's not always, um, yeah, I don't always think it's a safe one to do if you're suffering from back uh back issues so the half dog is a lot safer version so again the um the knees are in line with the hips hands are in line with the shoulders toes point straight back and you're just going to walk your hands forward so you keep your um keep your hips where they are because what it was then keep your hips where they are hands forward bring your forehead down so hands are sort of like shoulder width apart Just breathe into that one. So you feel, um, yeah, you might need to check your alignment or get somebody to check your alignment when you first do this because sometimes you tend to bring the hips forwards without realising. So it does sort of feel a little bit like you're sticking your bum up and back when you do this one. Really nice one for stretching out the spine. It stretches around the shoulder blades as well and the tummy. So listen to your body, it's a good one to hold for sort of 15 seconds up to a minute. And it's also an, um, a good counter pose to the cobra as well. And when you feel ready just Walking your hands back. <sighs> so you might want to just give your hands a little shake. We've done a bit of the arm and wrist work there. So hopefully your back's feel a little bit more stretched out now. We're just going to um, come onto our backs and do a few more stretches. So um, yeah, really good one to do is um, just laying down on your back. Have your knees bent. So this is kind of like a, a bit of a sort of self-massage. Uh, legs are going to come together if that feels comfy and your hands are going to come onto your knees. So um, I want you to feel your uh, like sort of sacrum 
area, really low on your spine, pushing down into the ground. And then you're just going to like do tiny, tiny circles with the knees to start off. And this will just massage the sacrum area. So, um, yeah, you should feel it like massaging itself on the ground. You're going to just make the circles bigger so you're like starting to spiral out. So the circles are getting a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. So it's massaging more of the sacrum area and... Yeah, just go as big as you feel comfy and you're like feeling it really kind of like easing away tension from the lower back. And then you're going to change direction. So start off big circles going the other way. And then when you feel ready, just slowly start to spiral back in again. And you just finish off doing like really small circles, just easing away any tension from the bottom of your back. You can just hold it there. So, um, yeah, we're going to do some hamstring stretches. So, um, quite often, if you're getting issues with your lower back, it's, a lot of the time, it is due to tight hamstrings or um, <clears throat> tight muscles, tight glutes and hip muscles. So, we're going to just stretch those out. So, you want to be laying on your back. If you've got a band or a belt, that might be a good idea as well you're gonna we'll do the right leg first so if you keep your left knee bent you're gonna bring your right leg up so um yeah so if you're gonna do these stretches do them on the floor uh, don't do them on anything soft because if you have got back issues it will compromise the back so yeah do them on the floor on a mat that's cool so you can either hold under the knee you can hold above the knee. Um, if you've got a band or a belt, you can use that or around the foot. And you're just breathing into it. So try and keep the uh, the lower back, the um, sort of like hips down onto the ground, back of the pelvis down onto the ground. So relax your breathing, push away through your heel and draw your toes towards you. So obviously I've got my leg fairly straight there. Don't worry if um, if you get into there and it's like immensely tight. Go to where you feel you're getting a stretch. So don't try and push it so that it's really too strong. Always tune into your breathing so your breathing will guide you in the stretches and tell you if you're um, yeah if it's working for you if it's doing good if you're struggling to breathe and like. <laughs> you might be trying to push it too far so it's more easing into it make it a daily practice or at least every couple of days and um, yeah it should gradually get more comfortable and easier so just breathing into that you want to hold for at least 15 seconds but I would probably recommend uh, like 30 45 seconds or even up to a minute So it's also one that you could do, I'm only going to do it once, but you could do it a couple of times. So you could hold it for like up to a minute, uh, release it, maybe do the other leg and then come back to it and do it again. So when you're ready to release, you just release it. We're going to bend the knee, take hold of the knee, just squeeze the knee in. And then we're going to do a stretch for the hip. So I call this a piriformis stretch because it targets really deep in the hip. So we've got a muscle called the piriformis muscle. And sometimes that just cause, uh, if it's tight, it can cause sciatica, nerve pain, um, hip pain. Um, but it does, the stretch does generally just target the whole of this area. So um, we're going to bring the, the right ankle across onto the left 
leg up near the knee if possible and then we're going to bring the left knee towards us so again if you're feeling it's quite strong you might want to use you could use like a, a tie or something a belt just to bring that up if you're struggling to hold that leg you might only be able to do that you might even be getting a really good stretch just doing this so again just listen to your body go into the stretch where you're feeling a good stretch hold it there tune in with your breathing so you can do that really nice deep belly breathing and back breathing as well so this one as well i generally say um yeah when i've taught it i quite often see um people bringing the, the body up and like uh, really tense but i think it's better if you can just relax the body set onto the ground and like relax the shoulders lengthen your out breath if you want to do that so the out breath is where we let go and we release things that we don't need so we release tension from the body which helps to release tension from the mind so as you um yeah so you can like lengthen the out breath make it longer than the in breath and also just send your awareness to wherever it's feeling tight as well and like breathe into that try not to resist so try not to tense up like breathe into it and as you breathe out just like try and let go softening the muscles softening softening the joints and then when you feel ready to release just bring in that left foot down take the right foot down and we'll do the same with the other leg so um, hamstring stretch first on the left leg so either holding here or here drawing the toes back heels uh, stretching up away from you you can use your tie or your belt or your band if you want just breathe into it So again, if you've got a bent knee, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Just try to keep pushing away through the heel. Um, trying to release tension rather than resisting it. Um, and just feel a really good stretch. So you should feel it right up into the, the heel, the sole of the foot, uh, all the way down the back, the leg, um, <clears throat> right down into the glute. So sometimes as well, when we hold it, um, you might find after like 15, 20 seconds that you could go a little bit further or you could straighten your leg out a little bit more. The, you might have released a bit of tension. So you could always do that. Just go into it a little bit further on and out breath. Trying to release the lower back down onto the ground, releasing tension from the lower back and the hips, the pelvis, also the shoulders. <laughs> so tension anywhere in the body is going to affect other parts of the body. So you might have pain in your lower back, but it could be coming from tension in one of your shoulders or shoulder blades. Um, it could be coming from tension in your glutes, it could be coming from tension um, in your foot. So, um, so yeah, it kind of, uh, we call it referred pain. So, um, so that's why yoga is really good, really, because it's so, it works all of the body rather than just targeting specific, um, a specific area where the pain is, it'll look at, at the other um the imbalance of the whole body and trying to balance trying to rebalance the whole body so um, we'll just release that bend that knee in take a few breaths here we'll come into the piriformis stretch so bringing that um left ankle up onto the right thigh and then taking hold of this leg so if you need to use the belt you can remembering not to 
Turn to the body, try and keep the back relaxed. Let's breathe into the stretch. So nice, deep belly breathing. Inhale, create space in your belly. Rib cage, exhale. Let go of tension. So sort of hold in, make sure you hold for at least 15 seconds, um, 30 seconds preferable or um, a bit longer. And when you feel ready, you can just bring that right foot down and bring the left leg down. So we're going to come into um, climb cobbler's pose now. So um, the soles of the feet come together. You might want to have cushions under the knees for this one. It's very strong hip opener, so it's going to work on the adductors, opening up the hips, and um, yeah, kind of like opening opening out the front of the body, and um, like yeah, sort of compressing the back of the body a little bit because it's quite a nice one because. Some of these muscles across here could be contributing to the back pain as well. And also incorrect breathing as well. So, um, yeah, if you want to use cushions under the knees, you can, which just helps to make it a little bit more relaxed. Um, the feet, soles of the feet come together further away from the body. That makes it easier. Closer towards the body will give you a stronger stretch. And... Um, yeah, just allowing yourself to relax, basically. So, um, yeah, you could bring your hands onto your belly or you could take your arms out away from the body with the palms turning up. So this is what we do in relaxation pose. And by doing this, by taking the arms out away, it helps to relax the lower back and the shoulder, sorry, the upper back and the shoulder blades and it helps to open the chest and open the armpits. Um, this position is great for doing um, the deep breathing, what I've just been saying, so it's really great for opening the abdomen, allowing the diaphragm to move, opening up the rib cage, so you can just focus on some nice deep breathing. You might want to breathe out through your mouth as well as you exhale. Lengthening your exhale. So just allow yourself to rest here for a while. So um yeah, you could just do this for like 30 seconds to a minute as a stretch, or if you wanted to do it for a bit longer, a few minutes, um, you could try that and see how it feels for you. So it's quite a, another restorative position, so it's quite, should be quite relaxing. Um, it is a strong hip opener, so hence the cushions. Um, and again, when you if you first do it, probably don't do it for too long just to gauge how it's going to feel on your hips because it can be really strong on the adductors, especially the insides of the thighs. So just focusing on creating space in your body as you inhale, feel the rib cage and the belly expand. And just releasing tension from your body as you exhale, relaxing as you exhale. So 
So the lower back, um, a bit like the the hips or the feet, is kind of like our support, our, our, our root, the base of the spine, the lower back, it takes a lot of pressure. Um, so it's really good just to do things that give it a rest and take the pressure off it. And relaxation is just great for um, allowing us to release tension from the body. So sometimes just that constant daily, daily like tasks of, you know, physical and mental tasks, they take their toll on our bodies. So bringing relaxation into your daily practice, if possible, um, can really help and really benefit um, lower back pain. So just allowing gravity to do its job basically here. So this is one you could finish on and you could um, yeah, do it as a bit of a relaxation pose and just really relax into it. Um, when you feel ready to come out, sometimes it's a good idea to grab the, the legs and just bring them together because sometimes they do get a bit, a bit tense. Um, and we're gonna, I'm just going to show you one more. So this is a twist, a, a, a reclined twist. So... Um, you might want to use cushions for this. Let me just think what. Well, we're going to do it on our backs with the knees bent. And you can keep the, the knees hip width and the feet hip width. Or you can bring the legs together. So it's a bit stronger if you bring the legs together. You could even, um, I might do it for this one. You could even do it with like a cushion or something in between your knees. That might help. So I'll show you with the cushion and then, um, yeah. I'm also having um, cushions next to my legs as well, so that can help as support too. But you don't have to use the cushions if you don't want to. So yeah, you can take those away if you want. So I'm going to um, take arms out across the ground at shoulder height and have your palms facing up, just allowing your chest to open. So you're going to inhale. On an exhale, you're going to take your knees down to the right. So yeah, I've got a cushion between my legs. So you might want a thicker cushion than that as well, even. Um, and it's just like kind of relaxed into it. So I'm trying, if possible, to keep my torso in a fairly straight line. And I'm just sort of like rotating from the, the waist and the, getting the stretch through the hips so the knees are going over to the side so the head can just stay neutral or if you feel comfy a slightly stronger stretch you're going to turn to look to the left um I'm gonna, i'll just do it without the cushions as well so you can see it without the cushions So the knees, obviously the knees together is a bit stronger, so the knees don't have to stay together, that's fine. Really nice one, another like really nice restorative one, just connect with your breathing. And release tension from your belly, from your upper back, from your chest and shoulders. So the twist can be strong, really strong on the lower back. And this is probably um, one of the, the most safest uh, kind of twists in yoga, I'd say. So, um, yeah, again, just listen to your body. Make sure it feels okay on your back. When you're ready to come out, you can inhale and come up to the middle. 
and then you can exhale and go down to the other side so again if you you can have the cushions or you can do it without the cushions relax your breathing as you're in it uh gaze is straight up or if you want to turn your head so you're looking over to the right this time Some nice deep breathing, allowing the back of your body to relax down onto the ground. So yeah, this is a great one for like releasing tension from the belly, and um, yeah, sometimes tension in the belly often is emotional tension. And that can create pain in the lower back. So again, it's a restorative pose, so you can you can hold it for a while if it feels comfy. Um, listen to your body. Whenever you feel ready to come up, you're coming up on an inhale. Just bringing your knees back to the middle. And then we'll bring the knees in and just have a little rock on the back. So just rocking like this is quite nice as well. You might just feel it. Massaging tension in the lower back as well. So to come up to sitting, um, I'm going to roll onto my side, and then in my own time, just sort of yeah, hand down, top hand down, coming up. So um, yeah, hopefully that helped and if you've found some of the postures helped and others kind of aggravated maybe then miss those out do the ones that help so you don't have to do all the ones that we just did um and yeah just kind of listen to your body obviously you can do you could do them a few times as well and preferably every day if you can um to start off with and then as a maintenance thing maybe like one every couple of days or three times a week um if you can find the time so yeah uh, we'll see you again soon for some more um 